And to all of our viewers around the world, welcome. We begin the day once, twice, three times with vaccine hopes. This is the third Monday in a row that the world has been given a reason to think that the end of the coronavirus pandemic may be near. Two weeks ago, it was Pfizer and BioNTech. One week ago, it was Moderna. Today, it was AstraZeneca that announced promising data about a vaccine that prevents COVID-19. To say that hopes are high would be an understatement. According to trial results, all three vaccines are exceeding expectations. Their effectiveness is 90% or better. And AstraZeneca is the first promising vaccine that, due to its low cost, could be delivered globally. A pandemic prevention for every man and woman, regardless of geography or income. These vials hold a promising formula for ending the COVID-19 pandemic globally a cheap, effective, easy to distribute vaccine. We have to get a lot of people vaccinated. We're not thinking about the vaccinations working in terms of one person at a time. We have to think about vaccinating communities, populations, reducing transmission within those populations so that we really get on top of this pandemic. And that's what it now looks like we're going to have the ability to contribute to in a really big way. The vaccine was developed at the UK's University of Oxford using the adenovirus platform. Researchers took a common cold virus that infects chimpanzees, genetically engineering it to trick the human body into thinking it has been infected with the virus that causes COVID-19 and producing an immune response. Over 24,000 volunteers took part in the clinical trials in the UK, Brazil and South Africa. Although the late-stage trials show the adenoviral vaccine is less effective in preventing infection than the mRNA vaccines developed by Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech, the data indicates it's better at preventing hospitalizations and severe cases of COVID-19. The people are not getting sick with this vaccine, which means that ultimately, um, even if you were to get ill, you'll have mild symptoms. And so I think that's incredibly important because it will keep hospital beds free and people won't be dying from this uh, from this virus. And that's not the only advantage. Unlike the mRNA vaccines, it can be kept at normal fridge temperatures, making it easier to distribute, especially in developing countries. It can also be manufactured at scale, meaning it can be produced in much greater quantities and at much lower costs than its rivals. I think this will be a truly global vaccine in terms of its deployability and its accessibility. And um, it's going to be probably more affordable than most others for yep. low and middle income countries. AstraZeneca has pledged it won't make a profit from the vaccine during the pandemic. If it gets regulatory approval, the firm says it's ready to produce 3 billion doses next year. And for more tonight, I'd like to welcome back to the day Dr. John Campbell. He is an independent health analyst in the UK. He has become a sought-after authority on social media and all questions about this pandemic. Dr. Campbell, it's good to see you again. And it's Thanks good that we're meeting under such encouraging circumstances. Before we discuss AstraZeneca, let's consider what researchers have achieved in less than a year. I mean, we're talking about three promising vaccines, aren't we? It really is quite incredible. I mean, when you think about the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, they've had quite a lot of money going into them, especially the Moderna. But the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has been done on a relatively small budget. And it's important to realise, Brent, that this has gone through all the stages that a normal vaccine or a normal medication will go through. It's just been compressed into a small period of time. So even though this has been very quick, it hasn't been skipping stages. All the stages have been done correctly. It's just a very impressive piece of science following up by a very impressive piece of research logistics and we hope followed up by a very impressive piece of uh, allowing this vaccine to be uh, to be used to the authorizations and hopefully followed up by a very efficient rollout as well and plans are in place for all of those things so i'm actually really i felt actually quite relieved this morning when i heard this news very good news all around yeah it is good news um talk to me about what distinguishes the AstraZeneca vaccine from the vaccines mm. uh, from Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech? Mm. Well, the, the, the Pfizer, the, the Pfizer uh, BioNTech and the Moderna vaccine, National Institute of Health vaccine, are both based on this messenger RNA way of doing things. Completely new way of making vaccines, both seem to work. 
the, the Oxford AstraZeneca is based on, as you correctly said, it's a it's a cold virus that causes colds in in, uh, in, in chimpanzees. It's a it's an adenovirus, genetically modified, so that when it's injected into the body, it will express the same protein as you find on the surface of the SARS coronavirus two vaccine. Therefore, it will make the antibodies and stimulate the T cells. The big difference, as you've already alluded to, is the Pfizer vaccine must be transported at minus 70 degrees centigrade. Now, this can be done in advanced countries, but it's difficult, but it can be done. And even the Moderna vaccine needs to be transported at freezer temperatures, whereas the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is just at normal fridge temperatures, the way we keep most of our vaccines. So if you're in a remote area in Africa, for example, you could just get your cool box out, put in some ice blocks, put in your vaccine and go off and do your day's vaccination with a very, very low tech approach. Mm -hmm. This is something all healthcare professionals already know how to administer. So it's really ready to just hit the road. It's a, it's a nice, low tech, easy to administer vaccine. Well, does this vaccine, does it need any fine tuning? And, and I'm, I'm thinking about the, the dosing here because I understand that mm. if you want to get 90% mm. efficacy, you have to take the half dose first, right? Isn't it interesting? Yeah. So if you give the full dose, the full dose is 50 billion viral particles. But they found out if you gave a half dose, first of all, 25 billion viral particles, if you gave that first a half dose, followed up by a full dose a month later, your efficacy there was 90 percent. 90 percent of people difference in infection rates compared to the experimental group and the control group. But if they gave the full dose twice, then the efficacy rate was only 62 percent. Combining those two, it worked out at 70 percent efficacy. So I strongly suspect that they'll be doing further research into the half dose followed by the full dose to get the 90 percent efficacy. What we don't know, of course, and it'd be fascinating to find out, mm -hmm. what happens if we give two half doses? Does that mean the efficacy goes over 90 percent? We simply don't know that because the work hasn't been done. But the other thing about this, if we can give half the viral dose for the first half the dose of viruses, half dose, the dose of the vaccine for the first dose, that means we can have 25% more people vaccinated for the same volume of vaccine. So it's actually really quite encouraging results. I, I don't pretend to be able to explain it in terms of immunology, but it's uh, it, for, practically it's a good thing. It's really a case of less is more in case of the first vaccine dose. Well, well, who stands to benefit the most from this vaccine? I mean, at the beginning of the program, I said this is maybe the first global vaccine that we have against this pandemic. Mm. Mm. So pleased you brought this up, Ben. The, the, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine are both declared, and you can't say this is wrong, it's both, they're both declared to be for-profit vaccines. These are commercial companies. They intend to make some money out of this. But the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, they have declared that they will do this for a non-profit basis as long as the pandemic lasts. So they are going to be putting this vaccine out at really low cost. Now, the Pfizer vaccine, it looks like it's going to be around about 20 euros a dose. The Moderna vaccine is looking more like 35 euros a dose, whereas the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, it appears it's going to be slightly under three euros per dose. Mm -hmm. So it's like a tenth of the price rolled out on a non-profit basis. And as well as that, Oxford AstraZeneca have teamed up with 20 partners around the world. So this virus is going to be made in India in huge amounts, for example. It's going to be made in Australia. It's going to be made in South America. We believe it's going to be manufactured in Sweden and quite a few European countries because they've sort of franchised out the manufacture of this. This is, this is really an egalitarian virus. So it can be made in different places for local distribution at low cost. It really is quite, quite, an, uh, quite an impressive humanitarian uh, thing that they're doing here. Yeah, it is. And it, like we said at the beginning of the programme, excellent news is a great way to start the week. <clears throat> Dr. John Campbell, as always, Dr. Campbell, it's good talking yeah. with you. We appreciate your insights. Thank you. You too, Brent. Thank you. Well, to illustrate how quick...